Our first stop for this movie is this brutish castle. Not 10 seconds in, and it's already filled with screams of the oppressed. Some men are lined up, and this guy's being forced to convert to Christianity, but he doesn't want to. He'd rather kick the bucket than follow these commie soldiers, so he's promptly shot. Do it! Some more people are shot outside. Then we cut to a scene of this guy journeying on a bus. Welcome to Ireland. The year is 1939. Young boys are seen cleaning the outside floors while they're moderated by an adult. Then in another part of the facility, this guy's training his band class. Left, right. The class is pretty loud and can be heard from out in the courtyards, where the supervisor is strictly moderating the kids cleaning. The class then slowly marches outside while playing their instruments. After some time in cleaning, it's picture day. The band slowly plays in the background, while the brothers gather around the boys getting ready for a picture. They're neatly composed and the photo's taken. Soon, what I'm assuming is the head father, leaves the institution and he commends the brothers' work on the school. After he's gone, the boys are lined up like soldiers. Then one of the brothers inspect the boys' cleanliness. Someone's making their way into St. Jude's Reformatory, and it's William Franklin. He's toured around by this old guy and then shown his room, which is kind of crummy to be honest. Apparently, this part of the school was an old cell block for political prisoners, and it looks like Willie here is the first new teacher in this school for a while now. So for now, he settles down. He takes a look at the window and sees one of the brothers walking around, then finally staring at him. Good night. A new day comes, and this cop comes to deliver young Patrick Delaney here to the school. Probably for being a brat. He's sentenced here for about two years. Then he's given his uniform and his number, 743. Looking like this place is more of a prison than a school. In the school cafeteria, the brothers are closely watching the inmates, or students. And then Willie gets introduced to Father Damien. Soon, some students are lining up outside a classroom, to which Willie approaches them, then comes inside, and boom! Brother John's here to reprimand him for being a bit late. He gives him some advice, which he treats and belittles the children like a pack of dogs. Let me give you some advice. Willie isn't too fond of this advice, so he lets the boys in. Then they get seated. Brother John slowly leaves. Then Willie introduces himself to the class. He gives the kids a slight intimidation display, but he regards that he's a fair man. Soon, Gerard Peters, aka 458, asks him a question. What's someone like him doing in a place like this? One of the other students already underestimates his teaching ability, but Willie strongly feels that his teaching ability is good. He lays down some more minor ground rules, and then it's lesson time. Willie's asking 458 to read. But the class starts laughing because apparently he's illiterate. The boy who said that is Liam Mercer, aka 636, and he's asked to introduce himself and teach 458 how to read. He's reluctant to teach him, but he really has no choice. Then it's revealed that about 80% of the students there can't read or write. Let's head on over to this workshop class. So anyone else can't read or write? Where the boys are busy hammering and screwing away to make rosaries. No idea why they cut to that scene, but now we're back in Willie's class where he's teaching the other students to read the alphabet. Of course, things are a little rocky at first. Rubbish. Time passes, and it's lunchtime. Here's the lunch table of the faculty members, and they quietly eat their meal. After that, Willie gets back to teaching the kids the alphabet. Next thing you know, he has some downtime. Sit down and he spends it by tossing this ball around on his own. When we get back to him, class is already over, and he's just talking to 636 here about the books he's read. The kid says most of the books he's read are rubbish. So Willie passes him one of his own books to see if he thinks this is rubbish or not. He makes him read a specific passage. I am the sunlight. The old man who let him in comes to class and gives him some chalk. Soon they talk about 636, and the old guy remembers that he's an orphan, and he really doesn't have a direction for his future. A new day comes, and the boys are all in what looks to be a P.E. class, and we see the newly arrived 743. He bounces the ball on the wall, which Brother John sees and reprimands him lightly, since he's new. It. The boys are still learning on how to recite and write their letters, with some really having a hard time with that last part. Soon a fight breaks between 636 and this disabled boy. Well, he's asking the attacker to report to Brother John, and that doesn't sound too good. Speaking of which, Brother John promptly punishes this boy off screen, and he punishes him some more by reciting a hundred Hail Marys. Once all that's done, I tripped in the art, sir. He walks back to the hall. Willie looking at his wrecked face. Of course, Willie's not buying that, heading straight to Brother John about this situation. Brother John's boasting his head prefect status, and that this is the way he really disciplines the boys. 
Willie thinks there's a less violent, better way to do that. Better way to discipline the boys. So back at class, Willie's teaching as usual. Then he takes the boys out to a nearby field to do some gardening. Afterwards, they head on back, looking like the boys had a pleasant time. Another day of learning comes, and Brother John lines up the students as he inspects them in the morning. Someone then burps, and Brother John wants to know who it was. No one confesses, so Brother John picks an unlucky victim. 743. He's quickly smacked in the face, but then Willie stops Brother John from throwing another blow at him. Brother John says Willie's committing a very grave mistake. The night comes, and Brother John and some of his cronies wake up a lot of students. They force them to take their tops off, and then are punished by standing in the middle of the night with their arms raised vertically for like a long time. John then shifts the blame to Willie for this midnight punishment. Mr. Franklin to thank. Sometime later, 636 is reading one of Willie's books, and Willie spots him and recites with him. Apparently, the kid was called here to help Willie carry some books, and then he tells Willie that he knows he was in the Spanish Civil War. Apparently, Brother John told the kids about it, and now 636 is left to wonder if Willie here is a commie or not. Then they talk about the book and poem that he was just reading, which is coincidentally about the Spanish Civil War. Oh, sir. Then the kid gets all frustrated about Willie getting into Brother John's disciplinary actions, so he rudely decides not to help him with the books. Soon, Brother John spies on 636 and company when they're playing. Apparently, he thinks that Willie's a bad influence for the boys, so he talks to Father Damien about it. Brother John's heavily protesting that he should dismiss Willie. Speaking of Willie... Dismiss Mr. Franklin. Here he is in the fields, remembering the days before the Spanish Civil War. Soon, Father Damien confronts Willie about the enemy he made in Father John, and that he should stay in his lane, which the father is essentially powerless. With that out of the way, Willie gets back to teaching his class. Then one of the brothers, Brother Mac, violates 743. You know, what they're usually known for. Get me a piece of that Christianity. Soon, Willie and 636 have another study session. And Brother Mac supervises that class, announcing that confessions will go in a few days' time. After that, they leave. The day of confession comes, and 743 comes clean about the disgusting act that was forced against them by Brother Mac. Then the confessor makes him swear not to tell anyone else. Inside this confession box. Looks like Willie and 636 are hitting it off quite well. On the other side, Brother Mac finds out 743 narked, so he forces him to take a very cold shower in front of him. Shut. One day, the faculty's gathered around for an announcement. It's World War II, and they're at war with Germany. Right after this, Willie remembers his horrid past with the Spanish Civil War, and he goes mad with ringing the bell during the night. The next day, he breaks the news to the boys in class. They talk about what's gonna happen. England declared war on Germany. Then Father Damien talks to Willie in private. He says he's let him down, so he volunteers to leave. But Father Damien's a kind man, and he gets another chance. With that settled, he takes the boys on for another fun gardening trip, and all the boys get to cut loose for a bit. Soon, the raggy boys are taken further into town, along with Willie. Grow up. But then some street urchins tease him. Mr. Williams stands his ground and protects the boys against the ragamuffins. He takes the boys to church to have an on-hand learning experience about Christianity and whatnot. Back to the reformatory, the boys see a sad schmuck getting a real hard punishment. Apparently, that's 743. Then 636 accuses Rogers, aka 855, of snitching. So he starts yet another fist fight. Willie comes in to stop that Royal Rumble, and it looks like 636 is really ticked off at 855 over here. Willie takes the boy away to talk to him alone. Their solo study sessions continue despite their bitter past encounter. Willie makes him read a passage from the book, but the kid seems to be stuttering a lot today. Are you going to apologize? He wants to leave, and he makes him sit down, but apparently he made ends meet with 855. Willie's proud to see that progress, so he rewards him by letting him out of the study session for now, and it seems like their relationship is healed. Somewhere else in the cafeteria, a father of some boys is visiting two sons, and Brother John boasts how obedient they have become. Perhaps a bit too obedient. Yes, sir. Heading over to workshop class, Willie supervises, guiding them to make better progress on their new class project. After class, Willie goes into town to pick up a few things. Soon, the birth of Jesus' manger's finished, and the class, Willie, and some of the brothers all head to town to deliver it to the church. While they're at it, they attend the holiday mass, and everyone in church sings a solemn symphony of Silent Night. After the Mass, Father Damien congratulates Willie about his supervision on the class project. 
but Willie wasn't alone in this endeavor, so he makes Father Damien congratulate the boys on their hard work. They're coming with me, Brother John. The rest of the boys are dismissed, and apparently Willie gets the special permission from Father Damien to take the boys out for a little fun. Of course, upon hearing that, Brother John is against that idea, but Willie wags that superior permission in his face, so he has no choice. Brother John is left alone in the church, and Willie happily walks around town with the boys. He's starting to look more like a father figure for these kids. When they get back to the reformatory, they play a little round of snowball fighting. Now the boys are going to bed, but before that, Happy Christmas. Willie has one last trick up his sleeve, presents. Looking like Santa came early. Once they get their presents, they're thankful and go back to their sleeping quarters. With the exception of 636, solemnly thanking Willie. What they didn't know is that Brother John's watching them sternly and quietly while all this unfolds. You're welcome, Liam. The boys open their presents during bedtime and they all seem satisfied with the books they got, especially 636. He's given a special book of poems and actually sheds a few tears. The boys settle down and they all catch some Z's. The next morning arrived and these two boys are brothers. From the earlier paternal visit, the two brothers have their hair shaved publicly so that they can be humiliated in front of the other boys. The two boys are forced to kneel, trembling in fear. They're whipped relentlessly. <coughs> so 636 and 855 sneak out and get Willie. They get to his quarters, find him, and get him up to speed about the whole ordeal. The two then hurriedly run to the punishment courtyard. Then 636 makes a stand. He makes all the other boys not look at the horror that Brother John is dishing out. They vocally express their revolution, while Brother John keeps whipping the two boys. Willie runs as fast as he can to the courtyard, and there he gives a good fist to Brother John's kisser. Brother John is truly the epitome of the horseshoe effect. Lunch is served in the faculty area. Brother Mac begs to Jesus for forgiveness. I will break you. On the other hand, Willie's smoking again due to his stress from recent events and then he remembers being separated from his brother during that civil war. Well, he's back to teaching class as usual and 458 shows up. He's still suffering from his bad haircut and injuries, so he slowly walks over and Willie lets him sit in class. All of the other boys are feeling sympathy towards him. It's break time, and the boys play outside. Back to class. Willie's reading some poetry. He hands out some books, so the boys can absorb some poetic knowledge. You gotta give it to him. These boys came from not knowing the alphabet to learn in advanced poetry. All of the boys that were given specialized books read it over their spare time, where it could be during gardening hours, cleaning hours, or even during class. Looks like they found some real passion for this poetry. 743 needs some help with his poetry though, but not to worry, because Willie here tutors him. Consist Meanwhile, Brother John and Brother Max say that the floodgates have been opened during gardening hours. Brother John nonchalantly drops some veiled threats over to 636, whatever that was. The rest of the boys under Willie's class Listen, kind of the most soon learn to read poetry very fluently. Willie's looking quite proud of these boys and takes them for a fun time outside into the fields. Back to regular workshop class, Downey, aka 913, gets quite a somewhat painful fitting due to his colleagues being inexperienced at sewing. The same 913 then packs his bags and waves his goodbyes because he's already done with his sentence. He leaves quite the hollow feeling into his classmates, and even Willie oversees him leaving and mocking Brother Mac while he's at it. Let's check into Brother John, who sneaks into Willie's classroom and takes a peek at one of the books. Then we're back to Willie, where he spends some quality time with 636, asking him what his plans are for the future. Ever thought about being a teacher? He currently has no plans, and tells Willie about his rotten past. Willie then shares that he teaches here because he couldn't get a job anywhere else, which is a little secret. Before leaving, the kid's asking a personal question about Willie's love life. At first, Willie was reluctant, but he does say that a woman he loved was great, but sadly, she's gone. The kid apologizes and leaves. She was great. Willie's then left alone to reminisce about this picture with her, and 636 looks at a poetry book in his personal quarters. It's a new day of class, and this one boy's early, as he's working hard to perfect that vocabulary. Willie comes in and helps him out. Soon it's time for workshop, but Brother Mac interrupts. He calls for 636, and dear lord, I hope he gets out alright. Oh, wait, no. Our boy has a visitor. He follows Brother Mac to the visitation hall. The next class begins, and the other boys say that 636 has a visitor, so he's excused for now. The class begins, and 855, the boy with the weakest vocab, 
knocks it out of the park with his poetry. He's really come a long way. So everyone gives him a round of applause. 636 is taking a brother John, and this smells like trouble. He berates him at first, and then whips him, cause he accuses Willie of being a god-hating commie. Oh man, I hope this brother suffers an eternal flame. Cause not only does he beat him, he grabs that poetry book. Brother Mac is seeing things going too far, and has no choice but to follow Brother John. Soon enough, Brother John really stuffs it in 636, and Brother Mac leaves. Looking like 636 is on his last breath, Brother John leaves. Soon, Brother Mac is left crying, and Willie knows that look all too well, so he runs for the kid. When Willie arrives at the scene of the crime, it's too late. Brother John had officially ended his life. This makes total headlines to the bishop, and everyone's left disappointed. William Franklin is about to beat the stuffing out of John, but others calm him down. Or so they thought. Yeah. Yeah, no, let him beat him until his brains squish out like toothpaste. Sadly, Father Damien stops it. Willie's left to think about his last encounter with Liam Mercer. And the next thing you know, brothers Mac and John are escorted out of the reformatory. A mass is held for him, and Willie gives his peace that he didn't pass because of an illness, but because of brother John ending his life. After the service, the wall's taken down by both the brothers and the children, inciting some unity between them for once. 743, or Patrick Delaney here, gives Willie back his book of poems. That was in Liam's possession before passing. He tries to stop Willie from going, but he has to go. Soon he sees the other boys and he gives them all his goodbyes. The boys follow him outside, and Patrick recites a poem before he could leave. William Franklin changes his mind at the last second, signaling to stay and the group hugs all around. It's okay now to cross that wall because that was it for a song for a raggy boy. What do you guys think about this discipline? Let us know in the comments below using that hashtag cinema recap. This was Song for a Raggy Boy by Aisling Walsh, starring Aiden Quinn, Ian Glenn, and John Travers. Until that next punishment, see you around.